Hello and welcome to the 20th Data Cloud Global Congress in the south of France. Joining me now in Cannes is Michalis Grigoratos, CEO of Infra Partners. And Michalis, you've been all over the world, but now you're in Cannes. How many, how many data clouds have you been to over the years? Oh, um, I think I was here on the first one many, many, many years ago. Oh, wow, that's Nice. That's Nice. Um, yeah. uh, I forget the name. Um, it was in a nice um, venue. So, Acropolis. Yeah, the Acropolis, yeah, that's the one. Yeah. That's the one. So I've been here, I've been here for, uh, for a few years. Yeah. It's, <laughs> not a, it's not a bad place to be. Yeah, you've um, seen the transformation as well. It's grown a lot. It's uh, yeah, it's it's bigger and bigger every year, which is kind of goes along with the industry, right? The industry yeah. is growing as well. There's an all, a lot of new faces. Um, the old faces are still around, which is a good a good thing mm -hmm. to see. Um, a lot of new young talent is coming to the industry as well. I mean, the first six months of 2025 have created massive headlines. It's been 1.2, 1.2 trillion US dollars in announcements from Stargate in the US to things in China, um, Southeast Asia. When you look into Europe, 200 billion dollars here as well, euros. Um, in Europe. What's your temperature check six months into the year from January to June? How do you think things are going? Yeah, I mean, look, still, there's still announcements almost like every week, right? You see another developer, another you know, new platform being built. Um, there is definitely a lot of growth. Um, the signals are still very strong. Um, at the same time, there's a lot of noise, right? There's a lot of um, you know, companies, people that make announcements um, that they just that, it's just announcements, right? So we're going through a period where everyone is rushing towards the AI kind of gold mine. Um, and there is people that they do find, you know, workloads and they do find clients and they do sign up big leases. I mean, you have big announcements from CoreWeave, mm. you know, OpenAI, Oracle, um, you know, there's a lot of stuff happening in, in America right now. Um, they're, they're ahead of us, right? Um, as an industry, America is always ahead um, when it comes to data centers. But lately, over the last six months, Europe is starting to actually understand that, like, look, we need to have a play in this. Mm. Governments are getting together. Europe is trying to work closer with each other. Um, there's some concrete plans um, being made. So overall, the, the, um, um, the consensus is very, very positive, mm. which is a good thing for the industry. Um, but as I said, at the same time, there is still a lot of hype. So. Mm. For me, you know, running my own business, um, you know, being a scale up. So we used to be a startup, now we're a scale up. Um, we need to be very careful as to where we place our bets, mm. right? So we need to back. We cannot back everyone. Um, it's impossible. So we need to back the people that actually uh, have a plan and they're and they're mm. delivering. Mm. Um, but overall, I would say positive and 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 keep on going higher and higher. Mm. Do you think this this hype in the mind, I mean. Speaking about even on the conference example here, this has grown, it's more than doubled in terms of attendees in the last four or five years. Mm -hmm. um, all this investment coming in, it's just, just growing, growing, growing. M&A is beating records all the time. Is this going to be sustained for a long period of time? And when I say long, I mean even just four, five, six years down the line. Or is this another 12, 24 months until reality hits? And we're like, right, actually, this is not going to be what we think it is right now. No, I think in my view and from what I see and the discussion having um, with people, mainly all the funds and the people that are actually pumping money into this thing, is not going to stop. Um, we are at um, minute two of a 90-minute uh, game, um, football game, soccer mm -hmm. game. Um, we're very, very early. Um, we don't really know where this thing's going to go, but um, it, is, um, it is growing. The workloads um, um, are going to come. It's a combination of large-scale developments that they need to be very mm. um, strategically based geographically. Every country needs to have their own data, uh, AI data center um, infrastructure for sovereign AI. Mm. On top of that, you have all the enterprises that are going to be basically applying um, mm. AI into everything they do. Um, it's a combination of, yes, it's going to be replacing some humans doing some tasks, but at the same time, it's going to enable the same humans to retrain and do something else in the run AI. So um, we can see the revenue generation um, that's coming out of AI. I mean, there's some publications um, recently that demonstrates that how open AI is actually scaling up in revenue. There's going to be other companies that are going to follow up. So as long as you get the revenue uh, generation from AI and it's actually quite healthy, mm. this thing is going to keep on growing, growing, growing. There's no, there's no stopping. Um, there's a lot of people, you know, especially the older people, that are kind of like saying, okay, it was the same um, with the with the dot com bust, right? Um, but it's, this thing is completely different. Um, the willingness of 
the big funds to invest in this, demonstrate that this is, this is real. I don't know if you saw the announcement recently, the sovereign fund of uh, Norway they announced that they're going all in. Um, I actually read it on your, uh, on your website. Oh, good, good. There you go. So <laughs> your, your, yeah, your, <laughs> your, uh, your, uh, your email newsletter kind of uh, yeah. works. Yeah. So um, they basically said, uh, um, if you don't have a plain AI, um, you're not going to be able to grow. So everyone is kind of coming um, behind it. Um, and I said, don't forget, we're in mini two of a 90 minute game, right? Yeah. So we're very, very early. Yeah, I mean, and to the point as well of the, 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 the internet bubble in 2000s and then the financial crisis <coughs> in 2008, um, a lot more regulation, a lot more locks have been put into place um, to try and avoid any major global crisis like in the, the, the 2000s. Agreed. So um, people have learned from that, um, but also you have two types of investors. You have the investors that have been in this for a very long time, so mm -hmm. they're extremely bullish. Um, and now you have new investors that are coming in from other industries mm -hmm. that they're looking to do data centers. Um, not everyone will succeed, mm -hmm. right? There's a lot of, um, you know, uh, people, um, you know, we call them, you know, two men uh, and a van that are starting data and developing companies, mm. you know, kind of bring to the market multi-gig mm. campuses. Um, there's a lot of them that won't succeed, right? Mm. So unless you have the right team, um, you know, the right technical knowledge, um, the right financial backer, um, you're probably not going to win big. You know, some people are going to do okay, some people are going to do well, um, but um, AI is going to create new hyperscalers outside of, um, you know, Oracle's Meta, mm. um, Google and Microsoft. This is a time where companies can go grow big, get quite a bit of, um, you know, kind of megawatts under their wings and then, and then become the next hyperscaler. And then Europe, I think we're going to see um, European hyperscalers, mm. true hyperscalers being developed and established very, very quickly. Um, you know, within the next kind of 18 months, 24 months, You'll have people with significant um, people that don't exist today as a name. Mm -hmm. In two years' time, they're going to have significant, yeah. you know, megawatts under their um, under the management. Yeah. We, we're starting to see some 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 um, some tastes of that with, uh, for example, Nscale, which is one of your partners. Uh, we've seen in France, Mistral AI, um, who's trying to compete a little bit with OpenAI. So that's probably the first major um, AI company kind of going against the global giants. I agree. I mean, Nscale, as you said, uh, publicly announced, we've been working there for a while. We're building um, a number of sites for them as we speak. Um, they're, um, you know, they, they're growing um, like extremely, um, extremely quick. Um, we are working with um, a couple of others um, that they're very well uh, financially backed, um, and um, it's yeah, it is an interesting, uh, it's an interesting play, and it's the first time that America leads and is developing huge campus in the U.S. Mm. But um, they've been lagging in Europe, mm. right? There was the announcements recently from Microsoft where they announced that they're going to kind of pause and reshuffle. Um, that, for me, is a great thing for, yeah. um, for yeah. European um, kind of like developers, right? Because yeah. we now can develop and, 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 and have the kind of like a European uh, map, mm. uh, an American one, and then, you know, Middle East is a completely different subject. I mean, they make some massive, massive announcements, mm. right? The PAF in Saudi. Uh, G42, mm. um, it's growing. We see a lot of demand out of there. Um, and then Asia, it's, it's way behind everyone else. Um, they're doing stuff, but it's very small and very um, individual. Yeah. Um, when it comes to energy as well, it's not the easiest place on earth um, to build stuff. In Asia? Yeah. Yeah, so, so it's not just that. But not even looking to sustainability at that point. I'm just no, talking about so grid power, reliability. Yeah, grid, I mean, there's like, yeah. again, the grid reliability is not as mature as Europe and, and mm. America. Um, and also in Asia, you have so many countries that they have their own regulation, you know, mm. their, their likes and dislikes, mm. they're a lot more autonomous. But um, I think, you know, eventually they will, they will come mm. together. Before getting into regulations, just taking a step back into the startup feeling and all this sort of stuff. I mean, because you've started three, four, five years ago. Yep. Can a startup that starts in 2025 survive in this race now? Oh, 100%. Um, but they need to get the fundamentals right. Mm. So first of all, uh, well, if you starting, yeah, we started five years ago, we started in 2020. We were in stealth mode for about three years mm. um, because well, we were... Put COVID into queue as well. <laughs> yeah, correct. Yeah. Um, but also um, we've, we've done it by design, right? We wanted to spend three years in stealth mode just fine-tune what it is mm. that we're going to be doing and then we launched we had a customer we're now very successful we've got a few customers number of deployments across europe um, a startup um, it depends on you know if a startup that is um, not financed um, by fund mm. with extremely deep pockets it's going to be very difficult to uh, survive unless um, they 
kind of hit something unique, right? Mm. Something the software space. Uh, quite frankly, because you know, in order to win in this AI race, you need access to GPUs. GPUs are extremely expensive, and right? Shortage. Um, well, the shortage, I mean, NVIDIA are kind of doing extremely well like being Switzerland, so they will give enough to people, right? But um, um, they are 100% um, chasing uh, money. So if you've got money, um, you will get GPUs. Now, if you don't have money, it's going to be pretty hard to mm -hmm. land GPUs. Um, but if you're a startup, um, you know, as I said, you need your people. Um, our industry is growing, um, but the pool of resources isn't. Yeah. So getting access to good people um, is really important. Number two, getting access to good people at the right location, then the combination of those things makes the matter very mm. complex. Um, I suppose that's where you know our approach into the industry kind of brings something different where we centralize, we prefabricate everything. We have a factory in Romania, we've launched a factory in Houston, Texas mm. last uh, month, um, and we are planning, we're planning something exciting before the end of the year in the Middle East. So we can source good talent local to hub. Um, and I think what's happening in our industry as people kind of come into the industry, um, you know, they might be jumping from another industry, they're getting a bit of a salary bump because they're coming and doing technology now. Eventually, you see after a while, um, they're willing to kind of go to a site mm. for the first year, first two years of their career, but then um, they, they realize they're like, oh, well, I don't want to be in the middle of nowhere for like six years. So it's very yeah. difficult. And all of these big campuses, they're in, in very middle remote nowhere, locations. Yeah. It's very difficult. I've done it for many years myself, right? Yeah. So it's extremely difficult. Um, and I think that's going to be the biggest challenge. The other thing I was going to say, what people don't realize, like a gigawatt campus, it's a $40 billion investment in total, right? So it's a huge amount of capital. And in order to deliver um, a gigawatt campus over a two or three year period, because you know we don't have 20 years, right? We need to get ready within the next couple of years. Um, it takes five, six, seven, ten thousand people. Um, so just to you know, so the the project in West Texas, they had to build a city that could accommodate five thousand, six thousand people before they can start building the data center, mm -hmm. and then attract people in temporary housing and accommodation. They had to mm -hmm. build restaurants and bars and. Yeah. you know, um, uh, and places like life. that. So yeah. yeah, and and you know, and attract talent and, and you know, that's going to become more and more difficult as, mm. as these, uh, because these developers are now starting to, to pop um, mm. everywhere. Mm. You said we are two minutes into a 90 minute game. At what point of the game does this become all a utility provider? Oh, that's um, a very, very good question. And then what, uh, I mean, I guess, would you want this to become an utility? I do. Um, you do? Yeah. No afraid, no, no scared of uh, regulation? No, I'm yeah. actually, I actually love yeah. um, regulation. You love because, regulation. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I, I would love for the industry to be regulated. I mean, this is my personal, because then yeah. things are going to be a lot more streamlined. Everyone's going to be playing with the same rules. Hmm. Um, Europe is extremely well at regulating. Sometimes um, Too and much. Yeah, a friend of mine um, kind of said that Europe um, regulates, then innovates. Yeah, um, it makes the regulation, I guess, sometimes. <laughs> yes, um, and then we're gonna we're gonna get better uh, at it. But um, AI will become a utility. Um, I don't want to make a prediction, but it's not twenty years away. It's a lot shorter than that. Um, this will um, level the playing field, um, and it will actually, hopefully, um, when you are in a regulated industry, um, a lot of the big investment firms are actually it's going to de risk. Um, the whole situation for them. So a lot more money, a lot more stable, long-term mm -hmm. patient money is going to come into this mm -hmm. industry. So for me, it's going to be a great thing. Okay. But if I say like question, as you mentioned money, do you think we're going to go in through a major M&A activity, um, maybe in two years time, once uh, once the newer companies start really building, having portfolios to be acquired, real estate that can be acquired? Are we look, heading towards another M&A wave like the mid-2010s? Um, and could we also see some IPOs in the next uh, three, four years? Yeah. So. It's going to be all of the above. Mm. Um, like the, the pool is so big, so there's going to be M and A's. There's going to be new startups, scale ups. There's going to be mergers mm. um, between companies. Um, there's going to be public IPOs. So I'm I'm right now. Let's say I have four different clients, mm. um, and those four different clients have different aspirations. One wants to go IPO. The other one wants to like grow and scale it and be. Mm you know, a 300 million, um, you know, EBITDA company within the next three years. And like, it's a mixed bag, but um, this is not going to stop. Mm. So m and are going to continue because there's going to be companies that they will have to buy their way in, mm. right? There's a lot of companies out there that are not quite AI, they're a bit cloud, and 
um, they might not have the deep pockets required to play in this mm -hmm. game. So the easy way for them will be to like, okay, sell up and, and go and do something new, something fresh. So there's going to be some M&A. Um, and then there's going to be, yeah, there's going to be a lot of companies that are going to, going to IPO mm -hmm. because they need the access to capital. Yeah. So we talked at the beginning, we took a temperature check of the first six months. For the next six months, what until the end of the year, what's the three things you, you are looking forward to um, in space, in this sector? Um, the next six months are going to be interesting because the the noise to signal ratio of the past mm. six months, um, it was a lot of noise, not so much signal. Mm. Um, the following six months, um, people will need to start deploying Delivering, yeah. what they promised, mm. otherwise they're going to be left behind. Um, so we're going to see the winners um, kind of starting to appear. Um, and that's going to differentiate as who's actually doing stuff versus mm -hmm. people that just talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, so I think for me personally, um, you know, we are backing, I mean, we're a supply chain company. We, we enable people to build infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So for me, um, you know, I'm looking forward to support and enable the companies mm -hmm. that we backed um, to deliver and make a name of themselves, mm -hmm. you know, land customers, you know, off takes, sign contracts, and um, eventually, um, all of the Americans are going to come back into town, right? I mean, we need to, you know, the situation with tariffs and all that stuff needs to calm down. Um, and then they're going to come back with a vengeance, like the whole announcements from Microsoft and um, all of these people, like, they're just rebalancing. It was a craziness. Like last year, um, like everyone went out and just basically signed everything, got options on everything. Yeah. And then um, <laughs> reality hit, yeah, reality hit yeah. and said, look, we don't have all this money um, and we don't need it as quickly as we thought we did. Um, because you know their customers, who is the enterprise, they need to mature as well. They need to basically have all these AI, all these agents, um, kind of like working in the background. So it needs a bit of time. But I think in the next six months, we're going to start seeing okay, who is winning, who is actually doing stuff. Mm. I mean, Crusoe is killing it in the US, right? Mm. A year ago, it's got seven billion dollars from uh, JP Morgan. Correct. Um, and um, a year ago, which where we originally kind of had discussions around the project. I mean, we're not involved, but um, we're very friendly with you know, people from Blue Owl um, and um, digital, primary digital infrastructure. Um, a year ago, this was like, how are we going to do it? A year later, the push and persevere, then they're actually delivering it. Mm -hmm. So I think they're demonstrating to people that um, with the right team, mm -hmm. with the right financial backing, um, and the right leadership team and the right resources mm -hmm. on the ground, you can build a gigawatt campus mm. in, I don't know, 24 months period. Yeah, yeah. Well, which actually primary, primary digital infrastructure has shown um, with, with four guys behind it, even before launching, they managed to raise a lot of capital. Oh yeah, no, I agree. Um, yeah. um, I, I mean, um, we've been following Crusoe for um, 2022 um, when uh, I was having a chat with Rob Johnson, previously of mm -hmm. Vertiv, um, he's now G2 Ventures, and he invested in them in 2022. Um, and we had a chat about this company, the great things they're doing, and then, you know, like they kept on doing what they were doing, and, and that's why now they're not the biggest kind of AI um, collocation and cloud provider. And, you know, they have aspirations for a lot of other stuff, but um, again, that's a great point, right? If you back the right team, mm. and you have money, uh, resources, access to GPUs, then... Yeah, well, the rest will come together. The rest is yeah. easy. <laughs> <laughs> right, describe 2025 in one word. Describe 2025 in one word. Um, I'll give you two words. Mm, it, will be, it will be a challenge <laughs> uh, and an opportunity. All right. Challenge opportunity. That's challenge opportunity, if you put it in one word. <laughs> uh, Mikhail Zgirov, the CEO of Finfra Partners. Thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you very much. Um, as for your home, thank you for watching and do check our website and social media for the latest on digital infrastructure news globally. At the Tech Capital, you lead, we report. Bye for now.